What am I doing in this video? In this video, I'm going to be not looking at the code so much because if you look at the retention graphs of people watching my videos, it kind of goes down like this and goes, and then as soon as I start talking about code, it's like, it's like, it's like 30% of people actually are watching the code. Maybe that's because it's really not that interesting. Surprise! So I made this recent updates component that would go on my home page as well as the JavaScript page. Just wanted to populate these pages with something that's actually useful to people. And the original intent was that I would have these different pages show when they were recently updated. So people, whenever they arrive to the page, can like, oh, there's a new update on uh, this thing over here. Something I didn't consider is that this works fine on the file system, but once you put something into a CI, in this case, I'm using Vercel to both build my Next.js project as well as serve it. And the issue there is that it's doing a git pull every time. And when it does that, it doesn't keep track of when something was last modified. So that got me thinking, I need to come up with a way to actually track when these files are modified. I thought about doing some sort of like automated way of tracking it, but the more I thought about it, I was like, ah, uh, that's a lot of work. <laughs> so for now, I'm going to just do it manually. And the way that I'm going to do it is with markdown front matter. So here's an example of YAML front matter. So if you have a markdown file that looks like this, then you can add a fence to both sides and then add your YAML to the top of your markdown file. And that can be parsed using remarkjs's remark front matter. So the different formats, the one I showed you before was YAML. This is TOML front matter, same thing, both are supported. And what it will do is it'll create this node here that will contain your front matter and separate it from the rest of your markdown file. So in other words, these fences won't get parsed into your markdown. So something you can do to convert that front matter from the YAML or TOML into an actual object, I'm using a library called remark parse front matter, which requires remark front matter. So for example, if you have a file that has this is the front matter and then pass it through this unified processor and then you can access that front matter from the V file data. And it should look something like this. So I created a new file called char at, and this is supposed to show people how to use char at from a string in order to get the character at a specific index. So in this example, you have char at four, index number four is E. So I expect the char to be returned to be E. And then you can see at the top of the file, we have the front matter I was talking about. I've added some useful information like the title of the page, a created timestamp, a modified timestamp and then an array of tags and right now it just has one tag which is string prototype char at not sure what I'll do with these tags but hopefully I'll have some sort of search functionality or some SEO optimization that relies on these tags something that bothered me was the fact that I was passing all of my markdown into a react component and on the front end that react component was then crunching through that markdown file and then displaying the output now that seems really great. And Next.js will go and render the page. And when you visit the page, it's really snappy and fast. And the processing happens really in the background because when you arrive at the page, the page is already generated. You already have this static HTML. All React is doing is just taking the data that was given and then recalculating the page and making the comparison to see, okay, is this page actually what I expect it should be? And this is called hydration. But there's one thing that was bothering me about the way Way that it was that I was doing it is why have all this data being parsed and processed over and over and over again whenever people are visiting the page. So I dove into the React Markdown library to see how it worked. And I was mainly looking at this React Markdown.js file and it's got a lot of stuff in it. But the main thing in here is I can see the processor they use and how they set up their unified processor and then they run the processor on file. But that's not quite everything. There is one thing that they do, which is they call this children to react function. So I don't know exactly what this does. I look through this function here and it seems like there is a little bit of intelligence happening here. <laughs> and I don't wanna lose this. So what I decided to do is to just copy and paste that unified function that they were using and define my own processor at the top of the file. And I use that processor inside my get static props function. That means that when I'm building the page, I'm gonna do the bulk of the processing before it even gets sent to the page. And what gets given to the page is something that is 
closer to the output that I expect. It should just be an abstract syntax tree, which then gets parsed and converted into a React component tree. And that's exactly what I do here. Instead of using the React Markdown component that is given to me by the library, I just grab their has children to React function, pass the same parameters that they pass into their function, and then pass my abstract syntax tree into it. Hast is just hypertext abstract syntax tree. And that's a way of representing HTML in an abstract syntax tree format. But wait, where does the front matter come into this? So remark parse front matter adds the data to the file. So back in my path.tsx file, I kind of smashed together what react markdown and this remark parse front matter did and parse the markdown. And, and by the way, this returns a V file. You, you don't really need to know what a V file is. The main thing that we need to know is that the has that gets returned is something that we pass into our component. And then these, this markdown V file that gets passed into here magically has this markdown dot data front matter on it. And that contains all of our front map. Like coming from a world of things being immutable and all that, this is a little bit, a little bit messy in my opinion. But alas, it somehow gets into our JavaScript page template. But it's here, and I get my tags, and I get my title, and I put the title here with the typo material UI typography component. I add my markdown, and I add a footer with some tag. And as you can see, everything seems to work. Uh, the, the header no longer has a link, which is, in my opinion, totally fine. And then the code is rendered, and then if you press play, we get a nice little check mark saying that yes, my char is indeed E. And then I'm displaying some tags. Not sure what I'm gonna do with this, but we'll see. And as you can see, if I go into my tree and I click on another one of these, I can see it goes to another page just as it should. However, we still haven't solved the problem of getting these recent updates. And that's because I've been mainly dealing with things on the pages themselves. And all of this needs to be parsed and calculated before I even think about rendering the page. So that's what I'm gonna to do in the next video, I'm going to go through all of the markdown files, parse their front matter, and then create my own tree of all these files and all their front matter, and then I can start messing around. With it. Yeah, I think that's it. I'm experimenting with new stuff today. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Yeah, short video. Good. Leave it at that.